As the term might suggest, feeder fish are live fish that you feed to your pet fish. They can be a bit controversial, so I won't tell you how to think about them. Some people prefer dry foods like flakes, pellets, or freeze-dried foods. Despite the fact that those are often made by grinding up or freezing alive the live animals they use to make those foods. Whatever you decide, that is up to you. But when it comes to feeder fish, I personally use them. So I wanted to share the experience that I had with actually raising some feeder fish myself. And I used these to feed my flower horn cichlid, and it was actually pretty interesting. So here's a little bit about how my breeding project went, and what you can expect if you breed your own feeder fish. <laughs> Now, the reason I did this in the first place is that yes, you can easily and affordably buy feeder fish, but they're often raised in poor conditions. They can carry diseases or sicknesses, and if you have a rare or expensive fish, or if you just really care about your fish, you're not going to want to be putting your fish at risk. So I decided I'd breed and raise my own feeder fish that I know would be healthy to feed to my flower horn. Now there are easier fish options I could have chosen, but I've never bred convict cichlids before, so I thought I'd use this as an opportunity since they're notorious for breeding rapidly. I picked up two males and a female, I placed them in a 20 gallon tank, where two of them almost immediately started to claim a clay pot I had placed inside the tank. After the third day, they began the breeding process and intensely chased the other male around the aquarium. And the day after that, I woke up to find the other male dead. I can only suspect that the couple killed it trying to claim the tank. And not a week later, I had free swimming fry. So I took the male out and let the mother tend to the fry. The fry primarily fed on algae first, as well as leftover foods I was feeding the mom. Then they quickly began to eat everything from frozen foods to sinking granules. After about a month, the fry had reached about a quarter of an inch to half an inch, which I thought was big enough to feed my flower horn. So I scooped up about half a dozen to a dozen and released them into Fred's tank. Now when Fred was smaller, he could easily chase prey and catch small prey, but now that he's a bit larger, he can't move through the water as quick, so it took him the whole day, but eventually, he caught them all. And about half of them in the dark. Now it was fascinating to see the breeding process of the convict cichlid, but for breeding purposes, I found that they're not too practical. They're really feisty, they'll need a tank of their own. And on top of this, they lay eggs, which take some time to hatch. Unlike live bearers, which give birth to swimming fry that you can collect immediately. I'll probably go with guppies or platys next, to be honest. Nonetheless, I learned a lot, and I'd actually recommend you try your hand at breeding convict cichlids, if you get the chance. There's a little bit more consciousness when it comes to their behavior, so I'm sure you'll observe them and learn a lot from them. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, comments, or any advice you'd like to share in regards to this video, you know what to do. I'm a lot more active on Instagram, but I do respond to all messages every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday nights. With that said, my name is Gus. This is my aquarium info. As always, thanks for watching. And if you want to help my aquarium info grow, please consider becoming part of the my aquarium info community. You can pledge your support for this channel on Patreon, and of course, there are plenty of cool rewards for pledgers. Although your support in any form is welcome and appreciated. Thanks.